here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. All right, so the first mention of that phrase, they filled, is found in Hosea chapter 13, verse 6. Let's start in verse 5. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. According to their pasture, so were they filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. So he says, according to their pasture, so were they filled. Let's look at that word pasture. Ezekiel 34, verse 18. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture? But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must foul the residue with your feet? And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden down with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Jeremiah 23, verse 1 through 4. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 25 verse 36, A voice of the cry of the shepherds and a howling of the principal of the flock shall be heard for the Lord has spoiled their pasture look at Colossians 2 8 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ so there in Jeremiah 25 36 he says the Lord has spoiled their pasture I think about it. When something is spoiled, it is it is no longer good to eat, right? It is spoiled. And he says he has spoiled their pasture. A pasture is where the flock goes to be fed. It's a feeding place. It's what they're feeding upon. And we are fed by the Word of God. In John chapter 10, verse 9, Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So we go through the door of faith, Jesus Christ, the King James Bible. That is the good pasture which the Lord feeds us from. Remember Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And lastly, look at Joel 1, 17 through 20. The seed is rotten under their clods. The garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down, for the corn is withered. How do the beasts groan? The herds of cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. O Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee, for the rivers of waters are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. So the Lord has spoiled their pastures. He says, the fire hath devoured the pastures. And he says, the seed is rotten under their clods. Okay, so what is the seed according to the word of God? The Lord Jesus Christ said in Luke 8, verse 11, Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. So according to the word of God, the seed is the word of God. In Joel 1, 17, he says, the seed is rotten under their clods. 
So that is certainly not the true Word of God. That's not the Blessed King James Bible. These are the tares that the enemy has planted. It's rotten seed. The pasture has been spoiled, and that is what they are feeding upon, and they are being filled with. And if you remember in Jeremiah 38, Jeremiah was brought out of this dungeon with old, rotten rags. The Word of God says that our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. So look at Hosea 13 again. He says, According to their pasture, so were they filled... They were filled, and their heart was exalted, therefore have they forgotten me. Now let's look at that phrase, forgotten me. Ezekiel 23, verse 32 through 35. Thus saith the Lord God, Thou shalt drink of thy sister's cup deep and large. Thou shalt be laughed to scorn and had in derision. It containeth much. Thou shalt be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, with the cup of astonishment and desolation, with the cup of thy sister Samaria. Thou shalt even drink it and suck it out, and thou shalt break the sherds thereof and pluck off thine own breast. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast forgotten me, and cast me behind thy back, therefore bear thou also thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. So there in Hosea, they're not being filled with the Spirit of God. No, they're being filled with drunkenness and sorrow, with the cup of astonishment and desolation. Because we receive the Spirit, my friend, through the hearing of faith, according to Galatians chapter 3. And the Word of God says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But again, they are feeding in a spoiled pasture. The seed is rotten under their clods. And what they are feeding upon is what they are being filled with, and it is drunkenness and sorrow. Jeremiah 18, verse 15, Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient past to walk in paths in a way not cast up. Now, 1 Peter 2, 8 says, And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Jeremiah 13, 25-27 This is thy lot, the portion of thy measures from me, saith the Lord, because thou hast forgotten me and trusted in falsehood. Therefore will I discover thy skirts upon thy face, that thy shame may appear. I have seen thine adulteries and thy names, the lewdness of thy whoredom, and thine abominations on the hills in the fields. Woe unto thee, O Jerusalem! Will thou not be made clean? When shall it once be? So God asked the question, Will thou not be made clean? But God also gives us the answer in the New Testament. Jesus said, Now are ye clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So we are clean through the word of God, through the blessed King James Bible. And we are washed in the water of his word. And we put our faith and trust in Christ. And we are washed in his blood. He says there in Jeremiah 13, 25, Because thou hast forgotten me and trusted in falsehood. See, the word of God says, Who first trusted in Christ. They are trusting in falsehood. They are trusting in words of falsehood. Look at Isaiah 59 verse 13. In transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. So they are trusting in words of falsehood. They're not trusting in the Word of God. They're trusting in their little false Bibles and the tares, the false tongues, which preach a work salvation in them, which is why they don't trust in Christ. They trust in themselves. This is why they don't have full assurance because they're reading these false Bibles that tell them that they are being saved rather than they are saved. Psalms 119.42 says, So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, for I trust 
in thy word. So Jesus Christ is the word of God. So if you hate the blessed King James Bible, if you hate the word of God, then you hate the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is a judgment upon them. And they are departing from the living God. And they are going after their idols. They have their idols in their hearts. We are to have the pure word of God. The blessed King James Bible. The word of God hid in our heart. Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We read in Psalms 12 that the words of the Lord are pure words. See, Jesus said, It's not that which enters into a man that defiles him. It's that which comes from the heart out of a man's mouth that defiles him. And the enemy knows this, friend. This is why he has sown his tares. Because he wants to replace the truth, the word of God, with a lie. And the word of God says, Because they didn't receive the love of the truth, for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they will believe a lie. So they are being fed in their pasture, which is spoiled, and the seed is rotten, and they are being filled, and their heart is being exalted. The man of sin who exalteth himself, as he speaks of in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and he says that they have forgotten me. What did Jesus say to do in remembrance of me? He took the bread, right? And he broke the bread and he said, This do in remembrance of me. Okay, this is the book of remembrance. This is that one bread. Okay, there is one bread. There's not 50 million different breads, folks. There's one bread. There's one loaf. There's one seed. There's one faith. There's one spirit. All right, so the next mention of that phrase, they filled, is found in John chapter 2, verse 7. John 2. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou (laughs) hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. So there were six water pots of stone, I think about it, the law was written on two tables of stone. So they were filled with water, and they filled them up to the brim. Now that word brim is mentioned exactly ten times in the Word of God. Jesus said in Luke 5, 37-39, And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled and the bottle shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith, The old is better. So the water was made wine. Deuteronomy 32, 33. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Deuteronomy 32, verse 37 through 38. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted? 
which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Amos 2 verse 8, And they lay themselves down upon clothes, laid to pledge by every altar. And they drink the wine of the condemned in the house of their God. So look at John 2 verse 9. He says, When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, Hebrews 6 verse 4 through 6, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So this ruler of the feast tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was. Now that phrase, whence it was, is only mentioned one other time in the whole word of God. Luke chapter 20, verse 4 through 7. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then believed ye him not? But, and if we say of men, all the people will stone us, for they be persuaded that John was a prophet. And they answered that they could not tell whence it was. So this water being made wine is connected with the baptism of of John, which that phrase, the baptism of John, is mentioned six times in the Word of God. John said in John 1 31, And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. Now look there in John 2 11, This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. John said, but that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. So look there in verse 10, every man at the beginning does set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. 2 Peter 2 verse 20, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. The Word of God says that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. All right, the third and final mention of that phrase, they filled, is found in John chapter 19, verse 29. Let's start in verse 26. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. From that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was said a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Jeremiah 22, 26-30 And I will cast thee out and thy mother that bare thee into another country where ye were not born, and there shall ye die. But to the land whereinto they desire to return, thither shall they not return. Is this man, Coniah, a despised, broken idol? Is he a vessel wherein is no pleasure? Wherefore are they cast out, he and his seed, and are cast into a land which they know not? O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Write ye this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days. For no man of his seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. 2 Kings 4, 3-7 Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. When thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, 
and shall pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, whom brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Proverbs 25, 4-5 Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Hosea 8, verse 8 Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. Luke 8, 16 No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. 2 Timothy 2, 20-21 but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So there in John 19, verse 29, the word of God says, Now there were set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar. Now that word sponge is mentioned exactly three times in the Word of God. And this sponge that is full of vinegar, in Matthew and in Mark, they said they put it on a reed. Look at 1 Kings 14, 14 through 15. Moreover, the Lord shall raise him up a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam that day. But what? Even now, for the Lord shall smite Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, and he shall root up Israel out of this good land which he gave to their fathers, and shall scatter them beyond the river, because they have made their groves provoking the Lord to anger. And the last mention of that phrase, a reed, is found in Revelation 11, verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. So they filled a sponge with vinegar. But if you look at Matthew 27, verse 34, it says, They gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. So Jesus would not drink of this bitter water. Okay, these are the bitter waters that cause the curse. Look at John 18, 11, Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my Father hath given me, shall I not drink it? So obviously, what they were giving him, this bitter water, this vinegar on this sponge upon this reed, was not the cup that his father had given him to drink, because Jesus would not drink of it. And in John 18, 11, he says, The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Implying that the cup which his father had given him, he will drink. Now David wouldn't drink of this water either. Look at 1 Chronicles 11, 17-19. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem that is at the gate. And the three break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. But David would not drink of it, but poured it out to the Lord and said, My God forbid it me that I should do this thing Shall I drink the blood of these men that have put their lives in jeopardy? For with the jeopardy of their lives they brought it. Therefore he would not drink it. These things did these three mightiest. So he says these three took it. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it. 
by force. Okay, flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem. Okay, David would not drink these waters, and neither would the Lord Jesus Christ. And there in verse 19, David says, God forbid it me that I should do this thing. That reminds me in the book of Galatians where the Apostle Paul said, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 69, verse 20 through 22. Reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. So you either eat at the table of the Lord, the King James Bible, or you eat at the table of devils, all these other false tongues, these false teachers and false Bibles. That's the table of Jezebel. Now look at Ruth 2, verse 12 through 14. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for that thou hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed, and left. Proverbs 25, 20 through 22 As he that taketh away a garment in cold weather, and as vinegar upon nitra, so is he that singeth songs to an heavy heart. Thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. Proverbs 10.26 says, As vinegar to the teeth, and as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to them that send him. So vinegar to the teeth. That phrase, the teeth, is mentioned eight times in the word of God. The eighth is the beast. Deuteronomy 32, 24, They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. So they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. Proverbs 19.24 says, A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom, and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. And lastly, 1 Samuel 14.26-27, And when the people were come into the wood, behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath. Wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand, and dipped it in a honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened.